Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Circle of Love and Light. Um, I'm <laughs> very excited today for some reason about what we're doing here. Um, I'm your host, Dr. Jane Mountrose, and I'm here with my wonderful friend and co-host, uh, Gretchen Comer. We're both uh, spiritual healers, coaches, energy healers, <laughs> doing many things for many years. And this week we're going to do um, a welcome to spring oracle reading. We've been doing more oracle readings here in the circle and uh, both of us in our own lives and have been founding them to be so life enhancing. Um, so I think that's why I'm excited. I, I feel like something good is coming here. Anyhow, it's finally warming up a bit here in California after probably the, the cloudiest winter I can remember ever, at least here I'm on the central coast where it's supposed to be pretty sunny. Um, anyhow, it's just beautiful to have this opportunity to connect in again with the energies of spring and what really life is wanting to say to us, which is what I think we're going to pursue in the reading today. So, um, of course, it's spring in the northern hemisphere. We understand if someone is in the <laughs> southern hemisphere, you're kind of in a, a different pattern. Um, but I think that it's also we're here in the circle uh, to partake of infusion, infusions of light and love that are here for humanity wherever we are. <laughs> and I welcome people everywhere. Um, I do want to just, I have to press this other button so I can see um, if anybody says hi for <laughs> to us. Um, so uh, actually the meditation also we're doing today, we have no idea <laughs> what we're going to do because it's all reliant on, on the Oracle, but I'm sure we'll be inviting some of the beings of light to join us. And um, I'm confident that it'll be enlightening and wonderful. So as always, I also want to thank you for joining us and for being an emissary of love and light for the world. Um, I think we're here every week at this time to light up our lives, to to heal, to grow, and to really stand up as beacons of light for the world. So again, thank you. Thank you for being here. Before we go into our topic, I want to do one more thing, um, which we always do also now. Take a moment just to breathe and bring our energy together, whether you're here with us live or in any time we are together. So if you can close your eyes, that's helpful for turning inward a little bit. And just breathing in the most wonderful, beautiful, nurturing, whatever it is you want, magical, miraculous, loving light. And as you exhale, allow yourself to release any energy you don't need now, anything that's heavy. Just a few of those beautiful nurturing breaths. And again, bringing our energy together and, and bringing ourselves <laughs> together <laughs> in that in just being present to this moment and this time together i i'm always amazed at how good just a few little breaths take <laughs> or feel right. make I feel. totally agree <laughs> yeah totally agree yeah yeah so now i want to turn to you gretchen and ask you to share a bit <laughs> this is this is a big thing i i wrote down a little bit or a big bit a bit about your perspective on using oracles and also connecting with beings like the archangels and the masters to enhance our guidance, putting it all together. Right, right. Yeah, it's I love working with oracles. Um, I have used them for many years. And as I was sharing with you earlier, I find that nowadays, uh, I don't know if it's because the oracle cards are so different than they were. 20, 30 years ago, um, and people are writing just beautiful messages in the little right. accompanying books. Uh, they feel very heartfelt, but I find that now, because I'm bringing in the energy of angels and ascended masters and really inviting that in as I'm doing the oracle reading, that it, they're just a lot clearer. They're a lot clearer. They're a lot more, prof they're profound, you know, they- Right, <laughs> surprisingly <sacredness>. so. <laughs> yes, um, and you're thinking, how is this little card doing that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's very strange, but uh, it's amazing the messages and the clarity that is coming through, I think, is um, a wonderful gift to us right now for humanity. I think, um, as you had mentioned to me earlier, there is a lot more of that light energy just flooding the planet right now. And I think it's making it possible for people who are spiritual and, and waking to their spirituality um, to use the Oracle cards. They're a great vehicle for guidance um and and really help me kind of discern you know it, it helps me focus um better on what i'm trying to find out about my life and uh the guidance that i receive is always so synchronous and so accurate you know that it just mm -hmm. encourages me to want to do it every day <laughs> right yeah yeah me too it, it's just been amazing and i'm going to share in a little bit here a recent experience that I had. There are just, there are so many. <laughs> right, right, um, right. But it, it's interesting. I, I was away a couple weeks ago and uh, I took the time that I was away for, it was a whole week and really for self-reflection and, and uh, exploring all of these things <laughs> that we're doing here. And I decided at one point to do for myself to get guidance on a specific issue and first to get it from my soul, my heart and soul. Then the next one was to invite an angel with an Oracle card, of course, um, and receive guidance there and then from a master so that I could compare the experience, each of the different experiences and I think then I, I think I, then I did the Akash, I went into the Akashic records. So I had four different kind of, you could say many readings <laughs> from four different perspectives. And I was really amazed at how much each of <laughs> the additions enhanced the experience. Not that we need to go <laughs> do all of these things at one time, but I think it's really helpful to be able to validate that when we're doing something like adding an oracle, and particularly as Gretchen, as you were saying, uh, one that with cards that have a very enlightened perspective, that um, it really is quite remarkable. I want to say hi to Babs. <laughs> I see you're here. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's just, and I and we were talking about it also. I think if as we as we connect more, I think probably more with the individual Oracle decks and with our own guidance, which is part of it. That's what I was told this morning from Metatron. Um, we get more synchronous experiences from it. The things that actually come together, it's like, how could that be? It's just amazing. <laughs> but they're very fluid and meaningful. Right. It really feels like uh, the magic of the universe is working through the cards. It's it's quite oh, beautiful. Yeah. And it feels yeah. magical. It feels like it unexpected, pleasant. And yeah, just um, I always feel so appreciative when I receive these messages. It just feels mm -hmm. um, so validating and reaffirming, you know, with our connection with the angels, with the ascended masters, with our spirit guides. So it's it's beautiful and reaffirming and it makes it feel like it's kind of um, a, a circular kind of energy that just keeps flowing around and around. And um, yeah, I find it, it just very profound at times, just very profound. Like, how did the cards know that, you know? Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I was I was telling Gretchen uh, earlier, just the last few days, I I did a couple different readings and uh, in the first reading, I was connected with uh, Archangel Faith, and that was something new for me, which was really beautiful and profound. And then the next day, I I, I did another reading. It was a, a separate one, and I was connected uh, first with Ascended Master El Moria, who I hadn't connected much with, and I was reading about him. He sounded very much like the energy of Archangel Michael, very about grounding and strengthening and and clearing cords and, and all of those things. I thought, wow, that sounds so much like there's a connection between him and Michael. And 
I drew another card for insights. And then then I, I have an Archangel card deck, a, a new one that I just got this uh, one from Diana Cooper. And it has 44 Archangels in it. And I got it because I thought, well, gee, maybe I'll meet some new ones that are of value to me. So I thought, well, I, I guess I'll draw an Archangel card too. And I got Archangel Michael. So I had El Moria and Michael. And I looked it up and they are connected in what's known as the, the first ray, which is a spiritual uh, system or uh, <laughs> I can't go into what the rays are exactly if you don't know, but it, it's okay. Um, the first ray, it's, it's a certain energy that's available to humanity, you could say. Um, so they're connected in the first ray. And then I thought, then I was thinking, well, gee, I thought somehow I thought Archangel Faith or Faith was connected to Michael. So I went back in my notes. I I record everything <laughs> into notes. And it was. So Archangel Faith is Archangel Michael's twin flame. And and in relation to the the connection between the angels and the masters, Michael and El Moria are actually connected too. So I I had all of three of them in this period of a couple of days. And I thought, well, I still haven't, I don't feel like I've completed whatever it was that it was wanting to tell me, but I thought that's so, just so incredible to me. And yet <laughs> what we're opening to with the oracles is, I call it managed synchronicity, is a synchronous kind of a connection between things. And it, it actually seems to happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's beautiful I think um finding those discovering those are, are mm -hmm. they're just fun it's fun and exciting to be able to make those kind of connections you know mm -hmm. yeah right yeah and along with it, it's not just I think we're speaking on intellectual terms which is actually a valuable part about it is that it does provide some food for the mind in the messages um and it it also we can connect with their energy for they're coming to us to share something with us it, it might be messages it might be in all cases to me it seems like the blessings of the light that they bring are reaffirming and clearing <laughs> helpful and shifting uh whatever it is we're experiencing like that time i was feeling kind of harried with a lot of things to do um, and when I was done, I was fine. I was relaxed, <laughs> calm in the moment, and also feeling so blessed. I think that's another thing I feel. I just feel so blessed by them. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, their presence adds a whole new quality to the Oracle reading, mm -hmm. and to call them in is... It, it really it's like inviting in more synchronicity by calling them in where we're inviting in more connection more um more heart more spirit and it just makes it so much more meaningful to to read your oracle cards in that way and um instead of just getting a message for the day or just you know just choosing a card kind of randomly it um there's something about pulling all of that together that it creates just a really sacred experience you know with, mm -hmm. with yourself and with with the angels so that's right. I like to do that way too yeah yeah and um what we often recommend and we've been incorporating into our teachings is doing readings with two or three cards the first one might is likely to be either a master or an angel, depending on your intention, which way, which way you're wanting to go with the reading. Um, and then the second one, uh, I would call it a significator card. That's a term that's common, commonly used, which has the intention of providing deeper insights about whatever the topic is. Um, and so that allows you to actually take it a little further. And then sometimes I'll even add a third, like I mentioned with that Archangel card, or you could add a card like where it's going. And, and it's all really your intention, what and <laughs> what you put in there. Um, but the two cards generally is quite quite a wonderful reading. I did one also, I had another one. I <laughs> It was 
probably a couple months ago, I injured my right shoulder and I've been uh, working to heal it for this whole time. And it was starting to get much better. And on the day when I, when I felt it was getting much better, I um, was hit, <laughs> got hit um, in the shoulder by something that was right in the spot <laughs> where it had been injured and brought all of the pain back again. And so I, you know, then you're feeling like, you know, like you're a victim, <laughs> of course. It's like, why is this happening to me? Um, and I knew that it's, that's not the way life is. So I did a reading on that and I just, it is interesting. I, the first thing, or the first being I got, which is a master was Melchizedek. Another one I haven't connected with that much, some, but um, who's a profoundly wise and ancient master. And I had a highlight here. Um, you're preparing for a transition where you will move beyond another level of fear and into the inner sanctum of your heart and soul. Um, and that was that was from this uh, Keepers of the Light Oracle from Kyle Gray, which we'll be using today. And and that was beautiful. And just feeling his that divinely wise energy, just feeling like <laughs> being wrapped in a blanket of this beautiful, loving, wise energy. I felt much better. And then I drew from actually from Rebecca. Campbell's, we've used this one a lot in the circle, Work Your Light Oracle. And the card I got was called, um, what was it? The Ever Unfolding Rose. And it, it was interesting, picking up on Melchizedek's message, it said, the challenge of life is to keep your heart open when you most want to close it, to let life crack you open, to open through hurt and loss, to allow what is falling away to fall away. And it just felt so synchronous and beautiful. And it and it did, I sensed then it was a message for me to avoid falling into feeling like I was a victim of something and recognizing that I actually it was an opportunity to open more and to go into the flow with life and allow allow it to be what it is, whatever that is. And I have to say, I'm feeling much better already. My shoulder is <laughs> getting much better faster this time. So, um, yeah, it's just, again, I'm, I'm so grateful. Oh, beautiful. Um, so maybe it would be time to draw the first card. What do you think? Okay. It sounds good. Yeah, and I, I didn't mention before, but maybe if I draw the first one, you can draw the significator if you want to okay. be Absolutely. thinking that way. Um, so we're going to draw a master and our we want to have an inquiry. <laughs> um, so the inquiry is just what would be of great value for all of us who are here collectively as we open to this beautiful spring energy that is coming. So we're going to get a master. And this is interesting. We have Paul the, Ven the Venetian, who is actually uh, an ascended master who's connected a lot with creativity and working with creative people. And something I really love about these cards from Kyle Gray is if you just look at him, Mm -hmm. To me, I look into their eyes and I can feel their presence. I can feel his energy now. I'm going to read a little bit about it. It says, experiencing grace, share your gifts with grace. Waves of inspiration and love are coming to you. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm, so I'm going to read a little more from the book. And actually, that's a beautiful message for spring to be opening to all of the inspiration that comes with it. He must be here. Here he is. Paul the Venetian is said to be the ascended master of Paolo Veronese, a famous artist of the Italian Renaissance. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. The Venetian re refers to the fact that he was connected to Venice, Italy. It is believed that on his passing in 1588, he had the opportunity to help humanity by sharing his lifelong wisdom. 
He is the keeper of the light who keeps us, who helps us to accept our talents and hone our skills so that we may share the beauty of our soul with the world. He brings waves of good energy, grace, and encouragement and works with all artists, musicians, designers, and anyone who needs the support in challenging their talents. Beautiful. So beautiful for spring. So supportive. So supportive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, Paul the Venetian is not one that I that I know very well. So that's that's a really powerful card, you know. Yeah, me me neither. Philip has connected with him and really loves connecting with him. Uh, it also says whatever creative ideas you are having at this time, they are inspired by the divine. Paul the Venetian is here to help you channel your gifts. Lovely. That's beautiful. So that's something for each of us to reflect on what is in that message for us personally, because it, there is something for us personally, because we're here right. and where we might go with that and how he might support us. Um, you don't have to have even <laughs> this deck of cards. If you want to know more about him, you can look him up on the internet. And I often do that with them. Um, with the masters just to if you want to know more your <laughs> your left brain wants to know more and just feel his energy oh this is beautiful also it's interesting there's a rose in his heart beautiful it is beautiful so would you like to sure sure i'm actually where this is going to go right i'm actually going to be using um the akashic tarot today oh interesting this one are you going to use the major arcana just the major arcana yeah yeah and i think it it's often said that the major arcana are just for when you're looking at major patterns but i think that <laughs> where we are now for those of us who are standing up as light workers and healers etc we're working we're dealing we're dealing with these archetypal patterns throughout right. our our lives right now they're up <laughs> so absolutely yeah so the card that I just chose is Archangel Raphael. Wow, that's interesting. So if people can see, that's a beautiful card of him standing in nature. Mm -hmm. He's actually carrying um, a green ball of light, which is often associated with Raphael. And he has a beautiful light around his heart. That is, can you uh, bring it a little same, closer? Same. The card can. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is, uh, right. So a little bit of the... Um, the energy oh, around yeah. yes, heart yeah. is actually pink um and then he's holding in his left hand the uh the ball of green energy which is usually associated with raphael and so this is um inviting us uh to understand that there are others there are helpful beings of light that are attending us now and it also um talks about a time of great achievement in people's personal lives there are doors opening and blessings abound when this card is chosen wow <laughs> there may be a renewal of a lost dream reuniting with family members or healing or perhaps a physical dish condition or of a broken heart and even if these conditions have been hanging on for a while now is the time that you can really break through so it says let Raphael be your partner in this process and you'll soon see why they call him the miracle worker wow. yeah that's <laughs> so it's inviting us to ask us to open to the presence and uh, the presence of Archangel Raphael who is standing beside each of us right now and it just says to take a deep breath and feel that energy the healing energy and boundless love to fill every cell I love that that's beautiful Every moment vibrates with the radiant power and love of Raphael. Wow, that's beautiful. And it, it makes me think, in addition to opening, he's, Raphael is uh, the archangel who is associated also with healing. And for us to be able to fully move forward, to embrace and share our gifts at this time, we do have to heal whatever it is that might be blocking us. Like I was talking about the thing with my shoulder and feeling like, well, gee, you know, oh, I've worked so hard now. <laughs> and here it is again. Um, to move, we have to move beyond those things that could trap us actually, so that we can be free to share the blessings that we are to the world. 
Absolutely. And to know that we have um, the ability to transcend anything that we want to let go of right now and heal because he's standing right next to us. He's with us and he's guiding us right now. So that that energy is beautiful to lend us that energy and ability to do that, knowing that we have protection and love and the um, the actual energy to do so, you know, to do the releasing to let the letting go so Mm -hmm. I love working with Raphael I find that um, his green energy is very soothing and uh, very healing and um, I personally really like connecting with him Mm -hmm. it's it's an auspicious card to choose (laughs) well and it it fits in with the other one so it does beautifully (laughs) of course it does (laughs) so synchronously it's it's so interesting I see Robin Waters Dykes is here with us and she says hello you all you all I think I'm assuming Robin is a female but whatever you are (laughs) welcome welcome love having you with us and I think this will this is in my mind opening to a wonderful meditation we can go to a mystical mountaintop and uh, connect again with these beings we can open to our gifts we can receive healing so what do you think Gretchen that sounds wonderful that sounds wonderful (laughs) okay you ready or any other any other thoughts before we start no, I just, I felt like um, this kind of wave of fresh green energy just moved through me. It was it's lovely. It's mm-hmm. just, I feel like his presence is is definitely right beside us right now. So that's mm-hmm. Right. And of course, it seems like they're both with us already. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll just go to a place where we can bring more of ourselves to this connection. And just in, in relation to imagery rising up generally, <laughs> works really well so we're going to go up to a beautiful mystical mountaintop so we can start if you're in a place where you can close your eyes and taking some more of those beautiful breaths of love of joy whatever it is that you want to bring in with your inhale bringing in more of the light from the universe And as you exhale, releasing any energy that you don't need to take with you on this journey. So anything that feels heavy can just start to drift down through your body into the earth where it can be transmuted back into love. You can send that light, that light with that you're in breath anywhere you want in your body, you can send it into your brain to relax your mind a little more. Send it into your neck and shoulders if you're holding any tension there, just anywhere. Anywhere where you feel you need more of that love and light from the universe. And as we move more into the moment, asking any energy that is not your own to leave your space. We can do this with our intentions, sending it lovingly back where it came from. Because we get confused many times, I think, because we have other energy from other people in other places and other times that's uh, congesting our fields. So as we send it back, it creates more space that we can open to love and light. And in a similar way, we leave bits of ourselves in other times, places with other people. So just ask any energy of your own that is ready to return to you, to come back to you now. You may feel that. I always feel energy coming in. And you may notice having done just these few things, you feel more present in your body in the moment, which is, of course, what we want for this journey that we're going to take together to a mystical mountaintop. We're being joined, of course, by Paul the Venetian, so we can sense his energy around us with Archangel Raphael. And I also sense Archangel Michael here is to keep us safe on our journey. He's always available to us to keep us safe, surrounding us with protective light. And now just start breathing in even lighter energy. And filling your body with it. Breathing it into all the cells of your body. 
and noticing you can feel so light now that you start to drift upward, almost like a balloon <laughs> that is just gravitating towards the sky. Just beautiful, gently, perfectly. And as I mentioned, going to a, a mystical mountaintop way high, up high in the realms, in the upper realms, place with a magnificent view of our lives in the world, place where we can connect more with who we truly are. just feeling the energy shifting and the light becoming brighter as we approach the mountaintop and then finding a place where we can sit together in a circle or stand together in a circle to be together in a circle. Opening more to that love in the heart, which is the creator within ourselves. And of course, when we're opening to a our creative expression, we are opening to that presence of the creator in our hearts. Right in the center of the chest, there's a beautiful flame. It's dormant in most people, but we can just breathe into it and brighten it up and feel more of the light of the divinity within ourselves emerging, radiating out from our hearts along with all of the blessings that we are to the world radiating out around us. And creating more space, allowing that energy, that ball of light around you to expand out now because you're safe here. You can just be yourself, which in, in itself is a beautiful experience. And here, open, open to what might be possible for you with this new spring emerging. Maybe something will come into your mind that has never occurred to you before. Some kind of part of your expression that is wanting to blossom. And maybe you sense something that's holding you back. And that's why Raphael is here with us. And in that case, you can just imagine surrounding yourself with a beautiful, it's a generally considered to be beautiful emerald green light. And I always like to add sparkles because sparkles, <laughs> they move energy, sparkling green light. To release anything that is holding you back so you can open more fully to the divine in you. So Gretchen, any any insights here? Oh, it just feels wonderful on the mountaintop. I was seeing this green energy and it was like I was standing inside of an emerald, just a giant, <laughs> giant emerald with all mm -hmm. of these beautiful facets and this energy coming through is almost like a breeze. It's like um, fresh green energy and light that's just moving through my body. And um, it's like it was pushing out kind of old things through my system. As you were saying, is sparkling. I felt like it was effervescent, mm -hmm. um, like uh, like a soda water or something, you know, <laughs> just like green soda water energy. Wow. Um, kind of moving through <laughs> my body. And it just felt very clearing. It felt very fresh like spring. It was... Um, definitely mm -hmm. like a spring quality to it so mm. it's beautiful and I I can see I, I can see that green energy just surrounding everyone you had said we're all kind of in a circle on this mm -hmm. mountaintop and I could just see it just moving around all of these people that are that are up here with us and it's just beautiful mm -hmm. very fresh energy yeah it feels that way I could sitting here I can I, I was noticing as you started to speak but how I'm smiling, <laughs> just like, oh, this feels so good. And just also noticing around us all the blessings that each of us is to the world. Sometimes this is alone might be what's holding us back to because we don't fully recognize that we are such blessings to the world. And each of us has something uniquely special to offer. 
that may actually cause us to shut down some of that light in our hearts. So we, if you sense that at all, can just ask that beautiful emerald green light to fill your heart and help you to open. It takes me back to that card I mentioned being cracked open. Right. <laughs> Allowing yourself to be cracked open to something new emerging that you've never imagined before. Right. I think there are times in our life where we become kind of, um, everything becomes very solid and kind of rigid and that cracking mm -hmm. open kind of reminds me of, you know, cracking open that shell or that barrier that we, we put around ourselves either to protect ourselves. It's just such an illusion, but to protect ourselves or to defend ourselves from the world and that cracking open is like an egg, you know, it's like, um, right. I can, I can sense that energy right now. And it just reminds me of spring two eggs and, you know, young, young creatures and things like that, you know, that are birthing right now. And um, we're also birthing that, you know, I feel right. that energy. And I, I clearly hear, you know, this energy is abundant. It's, you're not taking too much. No. We're not going to run out. You <laughs> right. know, it, it's, um, it's such a beautiful thing to know that that the ascended masters and the angels want to help us in this way. And so I think my my first go to is, oh, I've had enough energy. That's enough. Leave some for somebody else. You know? <laughs> right. But I'm hearing this message, you know, that it's it's just I can see both of them standing there, Raphael and um, and uh, the ascended master, just uh, Saint Paul the Venetian, and and just thinking about um, you know them laughing about how silly that is, you know, just mm -hmm. thinking that so uh, that that's actually quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's lightheartedness in it too. I feel like it's very lighthearted. Um, mm -hmm. with the angels at Ascended Masters is so uplifting. It, it never feels like heavy work. You know, it just feels very refreshing to me, like a fresh breeze. It is, right. That's the thing that they're so light. And what they're inviting us to do is to lighten up ourselves <laughs> and to, to come closer to that. And as you were talking about mentioning Paul the Venetian again, I saw him here and he's he's uh, in his artist role and there's this blank canvas in front of him and he's got his paintbrush and and he said, uh, remember that idea of and this we had in our book, um, the ultimate paradigm shift, we mentioned that uh, making your life into a work of art. You can imagine now if you have a blank canvas knowing that you have divine gifts to share you know what is going to what's that going to look like something really to i think this is something to reflect on for all of us to how can we go deeper with understanding that our lives are works of art or can be if we step up to the create the presence of the creator within us and allow that to emerge from our hearts into the world. Now I, I'm perceiving him as an art teacher and we all suddenly have <laughs> right. easels and canvases <laughs> in front of us and paint and you know we're on this beautiful yeah. mountaintop and this circle I can see that. <laughs> painting our own our own works, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just lovely. And it's a good reminder, we are creators, you know, we are mm -hmm. creating um, every, every moment we're making a choice. And so I think that's a good reminder, too, that with this fresh energy, we, we can create something new, we don't have to always add to the old, you know, it's, it's, um, there's many different ways to start over, there's many different ways to bring in new energy and to clear energy. And I think that's just a wonderful reminder that we are, we are creators of every moment. Yeah, we are, yeah. yeah, right. And here we are in art class. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting. I see Paul Venetian and um, he's in a white set of, a set of white right. tails. Yeah, white, I see that too. Tails. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he's a maestro. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Oh. And he's congratulating each of us on the works of art that we're creating. I also yes. feel Raphael is going around and blessing us. Mm -hmm. Each of us. Right. Wow, what a wonderful experience. <laughs> yeah. 
this lovely. <laughs> mm. So you can just take in that, that love, that light, and that scene, because you can come back here and add to your work of art any time. Not that you have to come here, but it is a, um, it is a metaphor. It's a a supportive place. You can maybe you can come back and have an individual <laughs> lesson with uh, Paul the Venetian art. Your art lesson, <laughs> whatever whatever feels right to you. And of course, just opening to all of their love. I feel such deep gratitude. And I think it's really important for us to remember to thank them. And also to, if we feel love for them, to let them know. Because they appreciate that. I I felt for so long that who would care? Why would they care if I love them? Who am I? You're a magnificent creator. They love you and they appreciate your love. So thanking them again, we can prepare to come back. Just gradually now drifting back down the mountainside, coming back to where we started here in present time, connecting our feet with the earth, M Mother Gaia. Just grounding, balancing. And appreciating the, these moments that we've had together and with these beautiful beings. Breathing in more active energy now coming back to more to your normal waking state, <laughs> feeling alive and alert and wonderful. And when you're ready, opening your eyes. Oh, that was lovely. As we were getting ready to depart, I saw um, these little green hearts kind of floating up from everyone's, <laughs> you know, just these little, little green hearts floating up. It was mm. lovely. Like they were just sending it up to the heavens, you know, it was just mm. beautiful. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. That was really, it was special. I was right earlier when I thought it <laughs> would be really Absolutely. wonderful. It was wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs> such beautiful energy such loving energy too you know mm -hmm. and this is the thing too with intentionally connecting with these beings like uh, Paul the Venetian and Archangel Raphael they become well the the masters are our teachers they're the ascended masters are beings who have gone through the experience of <laughs> being on earth as we have as I mentioned Paul the Venetian actually was in in <laughs> um, was in it's not Venus. <laughs> what am I? I'm I'm kind of Venice. Venice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Venus now. I'm on <laughs> another planet. <laughs> this is Foxy. She's looking around. She acts interesting. She doesn't usually look forward when she's in my lap, but she's a beautiful little thing herself. She yes. said, I loved it. It was wonderful. Any rainbows? I Any think rainbows? she loved the energy. Yeah. <laughs> she must yeah. have. She's <laughs> a little sweet pie. Yeah, she's a real sweetie. Um, yeah, kind of speechless. <laughs> it's a beautiful experience. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jane. Oh, thank you. It was a, a co-creation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, right? Yeah, I've got to go back and finish my art class now. That's what I feel like. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, he does have very uh, creative energy around him. I, I, I love that. <laughs> so at this point, um, this is when I get out the planet. <laughs> So this is the one of the benefits of the circle is that we all we raise our vibrations and we become brighter beings of light for the planet. And I like to focus just on sharing that love. 
you can send it to someone you love who needs some healing, some light now to your community, excuse me, um, to places like uh, the Ukraine where people really can benefit from more love. You can just send it to the world as a whole. And of course, send it to yourself. <laughs> just filling all of your cells with love and your DNA. This is another thing we can, we can shift ourselves vibrationally all, vibrationally all the way down to the DNA. I just can't think of anything else to add. I think that that was, it speaks for itself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do you feel that way? Do you have anything else? I do. I just, I feel very complete. I just feel like I had a, you know, a fresh spring breeze kind of go through my whole being. And that's just how I feel right now. And mm -hmm. I feel very uplifted and um, just still feel a lot of that kind of emerald green light around all of us. When I close my eyes and, and visualize, I see it just beautiful it's just still radiating from from Raphael and mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's just beautiful mm -hmm. and if you do need extend extended healing you can ask Raphael and his uh, his light his healing angels um, all of the masters have whole <laughs> large groups of angels around them who are also uh, supporting us and just ask for continuous healing today when you go to bed, you can ask for more healing at night. You can also ask for more strokes of creativity from Paul the Venetian <laughs> or from your own higher self. There's so many possibilities. And to me, ultimately also, it is about um, staying in a space, a creative space like this, not, not allowing ourselves to kind of get drawn into the drama of humanity. Um, and the illusion of limitation that uh, most people are suffering from. So we can just remember, remember who you are. Okay, so Gretchen, would you like to share a few words about how people can connect with you and anything special that's going on in your world that you'd like to mention? Sure, thank you, Jane. I appreciate that. Um, so people can connect with me on my website, uh, spiraljourney.net, that has the comprehensive list of all of my services. Um, right now, I'm working with women to help them create a magical life and uh, activating some of their spiritual gifts and working with them on that level. And so I'm doing one-on-one um, -on -one sessions to really give people individualized attention, as well as offering some programs. And on my website, I also have a page of free items that you can engage with and download. And uh, there are some of the past circles of love and light on there as well. So you can connect with that really quickly. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions, I'd love to speak with you, love to connect with people. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and with Awakenings Institute, which is the organization sponsoring the circle, a nonprofit organization devoted to creating a more loving world, um, we have a actually a course starting on Wednesday, uh, which you can attend live or all of the classes are recorded. Um, and it's for uh, spiritual transformation with the ascended masters and oracles. And so if you want to know more about the kinds of things that we're doing and take a deeper dive into all of this, um, that's available. Uh, you can find it. I'm giving you a tiny URL. That's Foxy. She's happy. So she's playing with her toy. <laughs> can you hear the squeaking? Just a little. <laughs> yeah. A little tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. Just, right? Yeah. <laughs> can't hear much tiny, but yeah. Yeah, yeah tinyurl.com forward slash four the number four masters dash course four masters dash course um and we certainly welcome anyone who feels like that is part of their journey so uh, you can also find out more about the circle at circle of love and and you can support the circle by following our page on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash awakenings circle. And you can share this video with your friends if you're on Facebook and just <laughs> send more of that love and light out into the world. Uh, you can also invite 
some of your friends to join you in the circle and share, then you can share the experience and um, talk about it. So um, thank you again for being here. The last thing that I like to do each time is to just bring that love and light through you out into the coming week. You might see it as a color, just sending that color, that frequency. I see beautiful rosy pink. It's pretty bright pink. <laughs> just sending it out as far as it can go into the future and filling all of your experiences with it. So that when you get there in the future, you can breathe and bring all of that love and light back into your present moment. Okay, so have a wonderful week. Hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye. On Easter. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Mm -hmm.